Today um, on the radio show, I talked to uh, Paul Kangor. He's the author of The Communist, Frank Marshall Davis, The Untold Story of Barack Obama's Mentor. Um, and um, I think your book was number 14 this morning. It's, I'm happy to say, proud to say, it's now number one. Yes. Um, and congratulations on well, that. Well, thank you. Uh, hopefully people will take this book, read it, digest it, and see what it really is, is all about. Congratulations on well, that. Well, thank you. Uh, hopefully people will take this book, read it, digest it, and see what it really is, is all about. I was just doing this, you know, mock piece on, um, on um, you know, the Comrade Update. Um, Mao plays a huge role with um, uh, Barack Obama, but, but his, his uh, mentor is what you've really focused on. Mm -hmm. um, did Mao play a role with, with Frank Marshall Davis? Yeah, he did. In fact, Frank Marshall Davis, when he, he wrote for the Chicago Star, the Communist Party USA publication in Chicago, 1946 to 48. And then he left that to go write for the Honolulu Record, which he wrote for from 1949 to 57. And as you know from these dates, that's precisely when Mao overtook Chiang Kai-shek and they had the revolution in China. It was, it was 1949. And Frank Marshall Davis was agitating throughout the late 1940s for the U.S. to abandon Chiang Kai-shek, to abandon the corrupt Chiang Kai-shek regime. And of course, you know, that was the policy of Communist Party USA. There was the policy of the daily worker, the position of Stalin and Molotov and the Kremlin. I mean, how did these guys get to, to do these things? I mean, you know, 1957, you're in the height of the Cold War. Right. This is when everybody is. How did he just kind of float out there? Yeah, I mean, he was, well, he joined the party in World War II. And we know that because there's a letter that survives. It's the only evidence we have in writing where he admitted joining the party. He wrote it to a Kansas woman named Irma Wassel. And he, we estimate that it was probably 1943 that he would have joined the party. And, you know, at that point, I mean, that was after the signing of the Hitler-Stalin Pact. Right. Which was when most people who were in the American party, not most of them, but a lot of them left because they were so appalled that, that their guy, Stalin, who they were you know, hopelessly devoted to, yeah, that mm -hmm. he would side up with Hitler. But here with Frank Marshall Davis, I mean, he was so devoted to Stalin's Soviet Union that he actually joined the party after the signing of the pact. And when he started the newspaper, because he wasn't a columnist, in case people don't know, this guy was um, uh, in uh, Dreams from My Father. He taught, Barack Obama writes about a guy named Frank 22 times. That's right. Is there anybody besides his mom or dad that he mentions more than Frank Marshall Davis? That's a good question. I'd have to do a count. It's possible Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Okay. So, I mean, <laughs> we're seeing the huge influence of this guy. That's right. right. That's right. Um, and um, um, how did he write for these communist paper? When he was in Chicago, he didn't just write. He wasn't a columnist. He, th this was his paper, right? Yeah. And he, he came in using the same kind of things that we just saw with Richard Trumka saying, hey, we need a second Bill of Rights, and they, they take the founders and they twist them. That's right. Yeah, there's a chapter in the book called Frank and the Founders, which is really alarming. And, I mean, you'll, you'll appreciate this. The American communist movement, a lot like the American progressive movement, would constantly invoke the American founding fathers. They would set themselves up as these new modern revolutionaries. And in fact, the kickoff article for the Chicago Star was written in July 1946, uh, Frank Marshall Davis's kickoff editorial. Davis was the executive editor of the paper, which was basically the founding editor in chief. So he did that, and he was also a columnist. But, but he writes this kickoff article in July 1946. It debuts two days after the 4th of July, and it's called Those Radicals of 76. And Davis is setting himself up. He's quoting Thomas Jefferson and all these others as this, as this modern inheritor of the revolution. You know, we're doing a new revolution. He uses the word change. I mean, this guy talked about fundamental transformational change. And, and some, of the, some of Davis's biographers even say that one of the things that he instilled in Obama was this belief that change can happen. And, and they did it by, um, by invoking the founders, just as the progressive movement did, quoting Thomas Jefferson, quoting Madison. And, and one of the people that, that he shared the op-ed page with, Howard Fast, who was the Stalin Prize winner in 1952 or 1953, he wrote a book called Citizen Tom Paine, 
where he was invoking Tom Paine as sort of a new common sense. So they would do this all the time. And of course, you know, if they ever actually set up the Soviet America that they wanted to, I mean, the first thing that would have been rifled apart would have been the Bill of Rights. Okay, um, let me go through a couple of things. First of all, let me tell you that uh, I am proud to be the publisher of this book, um, uh, The Communist. Um, I got this a year ago? About a year ago, the About proposal. About a year ago, yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't finished and read through, you know, some sections and some of the things that you had that you were working on. And um, I read it in a weekend and I thought, we have to publish this. I will tell you, and I think you felt the same way about writing it, I don't want to publish this book. I, the last thing I need is to be, oh yeah, and Glenn Beck's Mercury, Inc. The first book he you know, publishes and, you know, in the serious mode is, he's calling the president the commu a communist. Yeah. Not calling the president No, we're not. Communist. We're setting the record straight of who his mentor is. And you, just real quick, some background. You have experience doing that. Sure. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a, basically a Cold War historian. I've written books on Ronald Reagan, communist movement. I did a book two years ago called Dupes, where I wrote about the American Communist mm -hmm, Party. That's great. And I mean, you know, I, I do, I try to do serious research. Right. And so, you know, I, I was introduced to Davis that way and through, through documents and... Right. And you, um, and you stumbled onto him. I mean, not didn't stumble onto him, but you stumbled into this book. You're going, man, I... I I don't really have a choice. Right. I got this. This this is his mentor. Yeah. And by the way, amazingly, uh, there are researchers like Cliff Kincaid who have posted the entire FBI file right. of Frank Marshall Davis on the internet. It's been there for four years. Right. And you got guys yet, like David Remnick and the others who ignore it. And nobody, nobody in the press picks it up. Nobody. That's why I said today on the radio, the book was at like number fourteen, and I said it's important that this is number one. He'll be ignored unless they cannot ignore it. Yes. Um, and um, it's important that this book is number one. Um, well, hopefully they'll have an open mind and actually read it and learn about... No, the uh, press won't. No, no the they press probably won't. won't. No, the press won't. Okay, let me talk to you a little bit about... I just told you that the um, unions are now getting in bed with the uh, churches, all in social justice. Right. That, that was another story that we just did. That those, all those stories, by the way, in the opening 20 minutes of the show were real stories of the news. They're merging and going into churches with social justice, and they've got this whole new plan. This is not new. This comes from Frank Marshall Davis as well. Yeah, Frank Marshall Davis did this as well. In fact, a couple of the different biographers and people who knew them, uh, who knew both Frank and, uh, and Obama, said that one of the things that, that, that Davis imparted to Obama was a belief in social justice. You know, not just change that can happen, but also in social justice. And in some of the columns that I found in the Chicago Star, he describes America as, as, get this, no longer a Christian nation because of America's uh, virulent anti-communism and anti-Sovietism. Yeah, I have it right here. Frank proclaimed that a genuine Christian should be a genuine communist. Yes. And given most Christians in America were anti-communist and anti-Soviet, he questioned whether America was really a Christian nation. Right. They should be working together as one with the communists. That's right. That's what he believed. That, that's, that's Jim Wallace. Uh, that's yes. Jeremiah Wright. Yeah. Jim Wallace t saying that we're not a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, you would have these people who would basically argue that the gospel proclaims a socialist message. And I mean, the progressives, religious progressives have been saying that for 100 years. And the fact that you would have, look, I could see a, a well, I can't, but a, a, a Jim Wallace or a Barack Obama or somebody trying to advance that argument, fine. But when you got someone like Davis, you know, who's a card-carrying member of the Communist Party, and from what I could tell, early on in life became an atheist. I don't want atheists, pro-Soviet communist atheists, preaching to me about what uh, Jesus really believed. Yeah. Right. Um, let me uh, let me go over just something real quick. This is on page nine, and this is really to me. This is the hook of the book, because you lay it all out, and you say, have you heard these things before, basically? Rejecting and blasting Winston Churchill, vilifying um, um, uh, wealth, uh, being for wealth redistribution, favoring taxpayer funding of universal health care, constantly bashing Wall Street, marching in May Day parades, warning about God and gun-clinging Americans and huckster preachers. Yeah, this is Frank Marshall Davis. Yeah, these are all Frank Marshall Davis. You got about 20 or 20, 30, or, yeah. and they're all, they're all word for word Barack Obama. Yeah, I know, and I could have listed even more. I mean, I was thinking Give me earlier. God clinging, uh, God and gun clinging Americans, because that's stunning. Yeah, I, I mean, Davis was very weary of what he saw as, you know, huckster preachers and people who use religion as a crutch. 
Which um, is exactly what Obama said. Yeah, and also, too, you know, in his columns, he was, he warned quite often about the Catholic Church. I mean, he saw the Catholic Church as an obstacle to his vision and plans for the state. He, he was really appalled at the Catholic Church's, quote, unquote, uh, holy war against communism. So the Catholic Church was sort of in, in, in Frank Marshall Davis's way of the ideal state that he had in mind. And here you have Obama, I mean, the Catholic Church, the HHS mandate, the, you know, the mandatory taxpayer funding of contraception and abortion drugs. So, you know, now can I say that Obama got the HHS mandate idea from Frank? No, 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 no. But we're saying that you had this far left influence in his youth. Obama today is very clearly on the left. How did they meet? How did Obama meet? They met in 1970. There's a witness to this named Donna Weatherly Williams, who even David Remnick quotes. Uh, Toby Harnden of London Telegraph quotes. And she was there when they were introduced by Stanley Dunham, Obama's grandfather. And Stanley Dunham was looking for a black male role model or father figure to, to mentor his grandson. And, and I mean, we said in the show earlier, you or I, you know, if we picked a mentor for our kid, we'd pick a little league coach or a Boy Scout <laughs> master. It's, it's not going to be the. It's not going to be the guy who has a communist FBI file. Uh, no, no, because this guy was dangerous. The government considered him dangerous. They listed him on the security index, which and means what? The security index, and that's the main reason they kept updating his FBI file. They checked the box, retain on security index at this time. That meant that if a war broke out between the United States and the Soviet Union. He could be placed under an immediate arrest. Now, here's and that a, guy's the men, was was a mentor, if not the mentor, to the president of the United States. That's incredible. I, I mean, I mean, with that, Obama w would have trouble getting an entry level, getting government security clearance for an entry level fe federal government job, let alone sit in the Oval Office. I mean, I have students who apply for federal government jobs, and the government investigators come in, do background check, ask me questions. Do you, you know if this student has ever done this or that? I, I mean, Obama with a mentor like that, not to mention people like Bill Ayers and Jeremiah Wright, I mean, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, get a, he wouldn't be able to get a standard-level government job. And yet we elected him in November 2008. How, how did this, we have a minute, how did this make you feel getting down to this and seeing and knowing that this was your president's mentor? Well, I, at times I wanted to scream at the computer screen or whatever, whatever I was reading, and I did. And you know, one of the only things that kept me going was knowing the fact that we would publish this book and that the truth would eventually get out. And there can be nothing more frustrating than looking at this material and thinking that you're the only person in the world oh, who's ever going to see it. Oh, I know. So, so <laughs> you know that <laughs> oh, well. I know. I know that so, well. So to get it out through GBTV and The Blaze and uh, your radio show, places like this, is, uh, well, is terrific. We want to thank Sean Hannity for taking the exclusive yesterday and launching this, uh, this book and thank him for his uh, help on this. The book is called The Communist. It's available everywhere. This is a really smart, well-researched book. Paul Kangor, grab it now. The Communist, available in bookstores everywhere from Mercury, Inc. Thank you. Thank you.